to the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast, bringing you open and honest conversations about resources in Tuscarawas County. Now here's your host, Jody Salvo. Welcome to the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast. I'm filling in today for Jody Salvo. My name is Autumn Poland. I am the health educator, one of the health educators at the Tuscarawas County Health Department, and also a co-chair for the Vaping Task Force um, as a part of the Tuscarawas Anti-Drug Coalition. So I'm here today with a couple of other lovely ladies. If you want to introduce yourselves, go ahead, Diana. Hi, I'm Diane Smith. I'm from Ohio Guidestones, and I'm also a member of the Anti-Drug Coalition. I'm Susan Monticelli, Claymont Middle School counselor. I am Michelle Henry. I am the Claymont Middle School assistant principal. So um, recently we were in, uh, a crew of us were in Claymont Middle Schools doing the Catch My Breath presentations to the entire middle school, which was a really neat opportunity for Diane, myself, and a couple of Diana's co-workers, as well as Marina Colombo from the ESC. Um, but I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about why we were down there, um, what you're seeing happening as far as vaping is, is becoming an issue within that school system. Do you want to start off first by letting them know what the Catch My Breath program is? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Catch, <laughs> catch My Breath program is an evidence-based program and it is the only evidence-based program that deals with vaping and that is a program that claymont was the very first school that jumped on and said yes we have a vaping problem please come down and do it mm -hmm. so anyone out there that wants um, a vaping program to catch my breath is evidence-based mm -hmm. um jody and diane have been working with claymont city schools for some time they've been in our building for a couple of years but um, obviously vaping isn't unique to just claim on it's a countywide problem, statewide problem. Um, I'm sure across the country, a problem, but you know, we saw it last year a little bit. And this year, it seems like maybe once a week, we're confiscating one vape or more from students from sixth grade through eighth grade. Um, so we know it's a definite problem seeing it a tiny bit, even at our intermediate building recently. So we know the kids are getting it and um, it's right at their fingertips. And I'm sure we'll talk later, but they don't even know sometimes what the vapes contain that they're smoking. So very good. Um, and kudos to you guys for jumping on the um you know getting ahead of these issues because uh, yeah everybody's kind of following in line behind you so you really recognized it early and hopefully we can get ahead of it a little bit quicker i was um, just contacted last week by one of the local judges to do some prevention stuff or some anti or um, back end stuff uh, with some of the kids he's seeing that are coming out of the schools and being reported and then you know trying to to do some alternative um I don't know consequences yeah. something besides out of school suspension yeah, and alternative that's, suspension yeah that's something we actually started last year um jody had shared some resources with um mr Watkins, who's on the um, vaping task force as an administrator and he gave them for me to sort through and i made our own um, alternative to suspension to use in my building which i've also shared with our high school um the state tells us now we can't have as many suspensions. And so we're trying to cut down on some of that, but also um, not just cutting down on the suspensions, but the education of vaping, the side effects, um, the, the, some of the things that the kids aren't thinking about. So they sit through a program. Um, and then if they complete that, they take it seriously, they avoid being suspended. So um, we've used it way more this year than I'd like to admit, um, more so than last year, but I'm glad we had it. And then uh, the information we share, and that's very similar to some of the things they hear from, that all of the students get to hear from you guys that they heard here just a few weeks ago. So. So do you think it's working with the kids? Do you, do you think that besides us coming in, them setting in, in school suspension and actually having to do something, do you think it's registering with them i'm not i'm not sure yet it's almost too soon to tell for me i just feel like all of a sudden 
they're able to get their hands on it more than ever. I, I don't know if it has something to do with the pandemic and just more downtime. And um, I know, you know, one of the things we talked about when you ladies were in our building and we had mentioned to Jody is that they're walking right into local stores, gas stations, and they're being sold some of these products. And they're, um, like I said, they're just, they're there for them. They, they get them, they sell them to each other. Um, they're stealing them from parents. They're stealing them from friends, parents. Um, and they think they're almost like candy. You know, there's every flavor you can imagine. And to them, it's almost, it's almost like candy. And, and many of them think still, they think that it's better than smoking. They think it's just a vapor, um, just a, water vapor. a water vape that, you know, doesn't, have any side effects or consequences to their bodies. And that's the main thing we're trying to teach them going. I sat with the kids this year to do the alternative. Um, and I feel like some of them are like, wow, it opened their eyes to some things they didn't know. And I think some of them are just like, yeah, whatever. It's a chance I'm willing to take. Cause I like it. Um, what do you think? Mrs. I, I Mosa? Think sadly, some of them are addicted already. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, I've had conversations with students um, privately, you know, and I'm just like, just tell you know, do you think it has become an addiction for you? And kids are, for whatever reason, pretty upfront and honest with me, and they'll say, yeah, like, I need it at this point. So then it, it becomes a whole different ball game. Yeah. What are you seeing with the parents when you call the parents? Are they accepting to it? Are they like, well, it's not that big of a deal? Because I know we've had some occasions where it's like the parents are buying it for the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, is it more education that we need with the parents mm -hmm. and the kids at the same time? I have found that many of them are taken back that their kid even had it in their possession. Not that they're like, ah, oh, no big deal. I haven't had that situation much Um I don't even know where they'd get it. We don't, we don't use that, you know, where are they getting the money for that? How much do these things even cost? You know, the parents don't know much about them. And when she said about the addiction, I mean, we have kids that we see going in and out of the bathroom several times a day. And then we kind of get savvy to the fact that there's another reason why they're going in there. So that's how they've, many of them have been busted and they're addicted. And that's one of the things we talk about in that alternative to suspension, you know, you're opening your brain to addiction. So you could smoke this one time and you've now opened your brain up to addiction. And then sometimes when the vape isn't enough, then it's marijuana. And if marijuana is not enough, then what, you know? And I think that that's a scary thought for kids sometimes to think about like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to be addicted to drugs. And then they'll talk about somebody they know and somebody they love that's been addicted. And so I know when Autumn and I and our co-workers were down at the school and we talked with the kids, a lot of the kids didn't even realize we were telling them, you don't know what's in that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not buying it firsthand. You're buying it from somebody else. Where are they getting it? Are they filling the pot mm -hmm. up themselves? You don't know what's in that. So you may think that, hey, you're just getting vape juice mm -hmm. and you could be getting marijuana. The marijuana that's coming in in the... Um, vapes are so common that the kids don't even know and they've changed so much over time um where we saw it was rare that we would confiscate a vape they were kind of bigger and bulkier the big moms and now they're like you know all different shapes all different sizes and they hide them every i know jody has done the hit um the was it hidden in plain sight, sight mm -hmm. for for things not just vapes you know, yeah. drugs and alcohol all of it um, but they, you know, a lot of the sweatpants now have, there's the pockets, then there's an inside pocket. They hide it in there. They, um, open up the, the hole part? where the, um, string of their sweatpants comes out and they slide it in the waistband through there and hide it in their waistbands, their socks, their shoes, muck um, boots. up their sleeves in well, their muck rubber boots that they wear to school. I mean, they hide it anywhere and everywhere. They even know now to ask friends to hold it for them because they're like i i might get searched because i think they know i have one so now friends are holding it for them and unfortunately sometimes the friends get 
caught with a possession of a vape at school. But like I said, I know it's not unique just to us. It's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Um, I, I know it is just from talking to principals in other districts and friends who teach in other districts or friends that have children in other districts. It's, it's happening everywhere. I just, I uh, don't think pa some parents are aware of just how bad it really is. And sometimes they think that their kid wouldn't do it, but they are doing it. Um, so, and you know, like you said, they come in every shape. Mm -hmm. I seen a vape device this weekend that was no bigger than an old Bic lighter. The top of the device folded down. So if it's in your pocket, it almost looks like a silver dollar. Mm -hmm. oh, I was blown away how little it was. And I said it just folded down and you could never tell it was yeah, a device. Yeah, a lot of them look like the USB. Yeah, the USB uh, A lot of parents thought, you know, hey, they're like, I've drive. seen that. And I didn't even think that that's what it was. We actually had a teacher this year. One fell out onto the floor and she watched the student pick it up and then another student said, hey, they had a vape. And she's like, I wouldn't have even known. I thought it, that's what I thought it was. And so then Mr. Watkins and I, we have a, a bag full of the various ones we've confiscated, took it to a staff meeting and just said, these are some of the things you need to be watching for. Um, and the main one we've confiscated this year, it's the VUSE, the V-U-S-E, mm -hmm. um, they're blue, red, silver. That is the biggest one. That's well, your the tobacco what? company did, is doing a 99 percent or 99 cent promotion so they can get the unit for a dollar so they've made the tobacco companies have not done us any favors from a prevention standpoint because they've made them super affordable for kids to get their hands on and easy even if somebody's reselling it to them it's still not going to be very expensive so mm -hmm. it, it just yeah it makes it way too easy it's that's really concerning yeah. we got a lot of good information though when we was yeah. down there i can't thank Claymont enough. Yeah. I mean, you guys have been excellent for us, especially with us just starting up the 92 Initiative um, Committee in Yerkesville. What we've been doing in the school helps me out in the public. So I can not only help the kids, but I can also help the parents. So Claymont's been excellent. And the kids, God love them. Great when you kids, ask them a man. question, they answered. Yeah. I mean, no. And they were honest. I mean, very honest. They they helped yeah. out a lot on telling us, hey, this is where we're getting them. These are the stores we can walk into. Mm -hmm. So it, we told them, what you say in here, you're, we don't know who you are. We don't know your names. Mm -hmm. It stays in here, but it helps us. And it really has. They, they gave us a lot of really good information. Yeah. We that, had, in some of the eighth grade classes that we had the last day, uh, really shared, we were kind of picking their brains a little, like, how can we convey this information to you that you understand that this is important, that this is, you know, we don't want to stand in front of you guys and say, don't do this. It's bad for you because they, it goes right over their heads. Like, mm -hmm. how can we communicate to you? And they were, they were really good with giving us feedback because we don't want to go in and do all these programs and have them just be, you know, be clanging gongs in their ears because yeah. it, that doesn't help anybody. But a lot of them, you know, th mm -hmm. weren't aware of the harms mm -hmm. there. They thought, I mean, Half only half of them thought it was put potentially bad for you. Of, of did you guys see this? About three hundred responses we got back. We actually um, did. It was on the last day. We just did a quick survey of the kids and said, "Hey, answer some questions for us and be honest." And this was kind of like I brought what we got for you guys too. So. Okay, yeah, I didn't see those. Yeah, now what the, we got the, in return. Yeah, the second half were only some of the classes. You just want to say what yeah. a couple. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, only a little over half did realize it was bad for them. Um, but some of their choices for, for not using, you know, they, they realize it could have future impact on their ability to pl even play sports or go into the workforce. Um, but sadly only 38 of, of about the 300 we got back thought it was addictive. And, and that's, uh, that's interesting because we, we hit that every single week, but that just shows you, I feel like that they really didn't, even if they hear that it's addictive, they don't see the long-term health effects down the line. They don't see the, the consequences, the potential future consequences. It's just, and that's part of being a youth. I get that. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was really interesting. Um, and I think too, a lot, you know, we ask them in the beginning, in the first class, what do you think is in a vape? And so many of them just thought it was water vapor. And that's where I feel like 
maybe there needs to be more education to the parents in mm -hmm. saying that this is and I remember years ago when this was first coming up, my kids were younger, you know, I, I had a parent tell me that, hey, it's better than them smoking. It's better. It's it's still harmful. And I think that that's where the, the education yeah. gap is missing. I, I mean, I didn't think about it as much until toward the end of last school year, right before the pandemic till now, um, and how bad it is. I even have conversations with my little guy who just turned 11, you know, when you're out on your bike with all your buddies and somebody asks you or shows you just don't ever, you know, talking about peer pressure and telling him about what they look like and what it could do to his body. You know, he's into sports, he's smart, what could do to your brain um, and just having those conversations already. And sometimes I think parents think that if they have the conversation too early, you know, they're too young to know about that. But He's not. I mean, he's going to be in sixth grade next year and we're seeing it used by our sixth graders. So I think yeah, having those younger. honest conversations so he knows, I know he loves sports and I know he wants to do well in school, what that could do to him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, parents being really proactive. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I think there you hit it on the head where the parents think they're too young. I start my prevention in fourth grade mm -hmm. and these kids are so smart. Mm -hmm. they they know a lot more than what my kids did in fourth grade and what I did in fourth grade and I do think that it needs to be talked about at a younger age I do feel that the parents need to have that conversation but I think that a lot of the parents are scared too mm -hmm. I think they're afraid to answer that question that's one thing I think we gained their trust because on the last day we told them open honest mm -hmm. You know, it, it's free game. You talk to us, ask us the questions that you're scared to ask mm -hmm. anyone. And they asked both of us if we've ever smoked and we answered them truthfully. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to lie to you. We answered truthfully. And that's when we got to trust and they talked to us. Mm -hmm. And every kid, every class said, this is what we need. We need someone to come in and just be truthful with us and answer questions for us. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do feel that even in our surveys, they said, hey, don't do as many PowerPoints, but ask us questions and talk to us. Mm -hmm. We'll remember it more. Unfortunately, one of the sad things right now, I think there's some who see it as a game. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. You know, they're getting their hands on it. Let's see if we can get it to school without Mrs. Henry and Mr. Watkins catching us. How many times um, can we smoke it behind yeah, the teacher's back? How much money I can make off of it, even if they're not smoking it, it's... I can get it for 99 cents, sell it for $10. I'm making $9 toward a PlayStation card. You know, mm -hmm. I also think, you know, there's kids that we found with wads of money. Like that's a sign where that come from, mm -hmm. you know, wow. uh, PlayStation cards in their front pockets of their backpacks that they didn't get for birthdays or parents didn't know they had, like, where's this stuff coming from? Um, just not, don't be blind and naive to some of those things, I think, um, to tell the parents. Just ask questions and and search their things because you just never know. And one of the ads you guys brought in when I sat in with one of our sixth grade groups, um, it was like a trick-or-treat ad. And it, you, it was almost like it was made for children. The vapes and um, it, the pumpkins and the different colors. And different it looked like flavors. candy. And so that would look intriguing to a little kid. It tastes like watermelon and watermelon and blueberry and strawberry. Um, so when little kids look at that, they're kind of thinking, I, I kind of wouldn't mind trying that. So it's sad that the tobacco companies do target our kids and it's scary. And I, I've never, I've never seen those things, but also sitting in on your education you did with our kids. I, I enjoyed listening to it myself because, um, I don't see the vaping ads come up on my social media because they're not targeting me. Mm -hmm. They're targeting my 14 year old and my 11 year old. And so then hearing my sixth graders say, oh yeah, we see that on Instagram or it comes up on our Snapchat as an advertisement. I didn't even know our kids were seeing those things. I didn't know my kids were seeing those things. So I, that's as an educator and a parent was news to me because I, when they ask those questions, how many of you see advertisements with, you know, athletes or how many times do you see the advertisements on social media? I was sitting there thinking to myself, I never do mm -hmm. because they're not targeting me. They're targeting right, our the kids. kids and that's sad and scary. Yeah. 
and speaking of social media, that was another eye opener for me. Uh, how savvy they are. I mean, obviously they're way savvier than I am with social media. However, I thought Snapchat was fairly harmless. Like they're using that as a huge resource to um, buy and sell. To buy and sell. That, I mean, that's become the trading platform and thought you know how do you even get ahead of that because they're so locked down into their groups no parent is ever going to see that right they all have private accounts right. or whatever they yep. call the they even account. gave us names of a couple of the mm -hmm. accounts that set up the where they mm -hmm. buy so i'm like okay i'm going to try now yeah. so i let my grandson i'm like here you do this accept it immediately because they knew who he was they knew he was in the school so i had to hurry up and delete it but mm. it was one of those things where wow they they're smart enough to know we don't know who this person is we're not letting them in yeah and some of our kids have social media accounts that parents don't even know about and they're like he doesn't even have a cell phone well they log into their social media from their friend's cell phones on the weekends or at school um and you know of course then they hide things in the hidden vault or it looks like a calculator app but you it's you punch a code and it takes you into a hidden mm -hmm. app where they have snapchat and instagram and facebook hidden and their parents don't even know they have it so yeah it's like they're savvy for sure <laughs> did you see a difference in the kids' attitudes once we were down there after the week the month long of us being there did you see like an increase of them coming in and wanting help or like oh you know, uh, maybe they, if they change. were going to ask for help they'd probably ask Mrs. Monticelli or do our online referral? Um, I We have a, about our online referral. Um, Mrs. Henry and I were talking about that. It's an anonymous way. Like we've always taught our kids see something, say something, and we know that they don't want to say something if the kids are going to know. And um, so I just, I don't know how many years ago, set up a Google form where the kids can refer themselves to my office or refer someone else without it collecting who referred there's oh, a space wow. to put in the name. Now, that's on the Aportis, too, correct? That's supposed to be on the Aportis, yeah. Whenever I, I just seen it Friday. Start, yeah. Mm -hmm. Next school year, we're going to have, like, a full-blown system of that district-wide, which is great. But I would say this last school year that that online referral system, in the past, let's say, you know, I'm at lunch and I notice my friend's not eating and I'm worried about her, I might tell Mrs. Monticelli, hey, she hasn't been eating, then you know, we'd take care of it that way. But this last year, we have gotten a lot of, I guess, for lack of a better word, tip-offs about vapes. Mm -hmm. You know, well, it'll come in, down. it'll say a person's name, and it'll say they have a vape in their sock or, you know, whatever. And, right. and it's time-stamped. So as soon as I see that, then I'll call her or Brian, and we'll go to the classroom or we'll go wherever it is. And, and I've even... I'm um, gone in before and kids are, I have pretty good relationship. I'd say with 99% of the students in the building and um, one student, I was able to just say, just tell me, where is it at? I know it's in your boot, you know, and then they just kind of give it to you because they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Now, just in case we have some parents or even some of the kids watching or listening to this, this online referral, this is totally confidential, correct? Just so yeah. the, the students yeah. and the mm -hmm. parents understand that, yes. hey, we're not narking mm -hmm. because right. they don't know it yeah. was me. Right. Yeah. And that's that's one thing. We, we, we become a leader in me, school district, and we tell the kids all the time, if you see something, say something. That doesn't mean you're being a, they say, snitch mm -hmm. or a tattletale or a narc. It just means you know that something that's not supposed to be happening is going on. And an adult needs to know this is a harmful thing. These kids are doing something that they're not of legal age to do and it's harmful to them. So it's not being a snitch. And so, like she said, we have gotten some that said, I think I saw one fall out of zone to his backpack. And sometimes I'll say to myself when I, you know, hear a certain out say, no, there's no way, no way. I'm going to search through things. I'm not going to find it. And I do. And that's why I'm saying it's, it could be any of our kids. It, it could be my kids tomorrow. I don't know. I just know that we have to make sure that we are, as parents, aware of, you know, where they are, looking through our kids' things, who they're hanging out with, um, because they can get them everywhere. I oh, mean, yeah. they know where they can get them. And just uh, back backing up on that referral system, it's not mainly used for that. Like, kids will refer themselves, hey, I need to talk about whatever the issue is. Um, 
or if a student has made a comment to a friend that they just don't feel like living anymore, don't tell anyone I said that, then our kids know to tell an adult so we can get that kid help. And our parents are pretty, I think, educated about the fact that if there's ever a situation where we're worried about a child's safety, they're going to hurt themselves or someone else or someone's hurting them, the parents are called immediately. So I just, I think that's great. I think it's I, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, when I was in school, I think that would have been so tremendous to have, mm -hmm. just knowing that it's confidential and you can get help and not everyone knows it. Mm -hmm. And you don't I have to that. start the conversation either. That's the nice thing about it. All you have to do is let us know that you need help, and then we'll seek you out, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll get the conversation started with you. I'm curious, to, just circling back, you know, we talked about, you know, how you're certain that there are kids that are already have a nicotine addiction. Mm -hmm. um, we provided them all with quit line information. Again, it's, it's confidential. They can reach out on their own, get, get some support that way. So I will get numbers back, not from individual names, but it'll, it'll tell us if there's an increase in that. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see because that's really the first, you know, hand to hand distribution of information we've given to see maybe you know maybe we can get some kids help that are already addicted and yeah. you know we had kids ask for it we after our classes we actually had kids come up and say hey i need help mm -hmm. where can i go what can i do it's not i don't want the school to know but can i do it without the school knowing yeah. you know so the quit line cards came out early a couple of times yeah. mm -hmm. i mean there's not a doubt in my mind you guys coming has helped even if it helps a handful of our kids you know, just you do it one time, you could become addicted. That's enough to scare some kids um, and not want those things to happen to them. Um, some kids, I think, are already so far in and they're not, they're only, they're just doing what they enjoy and want to do right now, yeah. kind of, you know, being rebels. But for sure, there are kids, without a doubt, I know you guys, the information you gave was useful to them and it was useful to me as an educator and a parent. I learned things from you guys that I didn't know too. So, well, and we tried to explain to them, you know, you guys are a role model, maybe for your younger siblings, mm -hmm. but maybe your classmates, you know, what would you want someone to think of you? And then that's how you want to roll. And there was a lot of kids was like, mm -hmm. never thought of my little brother as looking up to me and mm -hmm. wanting to be like me. So, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about, a lot of that stuff with them and just mm -hmm. made them see it through a, a different view mm -hmm. instead of just going in and preaching. Yeah. And it was like, no, look, this is real life. And we even touched on, look, you don't know what's in them. Do you know nicotine is the biggest addiction, but what do you get out of it? And one kid says, Oh, I like the nicotine high. Like, okay. So what if it quits? Mm -hmm. What are you going to go to? Right. You know, what's your next step? Oh, well, I don't know. So unfortunately I did bring up my brother's, passing and i told him i'm like look it happens at your age it starts at your guys's yeah. age and you could see a lot of them when they hear real life it drew yeah. them in a lot more it definitely yeah it made an impact it's not as um yeah remote of a, or a general black and white idea. yeah yeah it's it's more and i you know i almost thought it was interesting too having poet in the school yeah and we talk about very briefly about how if their animals were to get a hold of these devices and i give the example that my kids leave their stuff lay all over the place so what if accidentally you're a family pet and that really rang home to a lot of these kids they're very compassionate kids so yeah. they would never want to do anything that would harm someone else or the right. family pet mm -hmm. so i think just trying to hit every angle and really get kids to see that this is a dangerous thing they're messing with yeah. they could hurt other people not just themselves there was, uh, my son wrestled in Virginia Beach over the weekend, and when we were um, going down the strip to go out to dinner one night, there's a vape shop, like probably every three to four souvenir shops on the strip. And I just, of course, those things, I look at those things now where before I never would have. Um, the kids going in and out of those vape shops, I'm, you're, I think you have to be 18 or you're supposed to be to even, 21. And is it 21? 21 in Ohio. Well, no, yeah. it's federal it's now. 21 yeah, in it's federal. federal. So, country. but I mean, the, I saw kids that were at least, you know, no older than 14, 15 years old going in and out. Um, probably kids that live down there or maybe kids that were there vacationing. Vacation. I don't know, but I'm, I just, 
they were probably going in there and buying so those did things. you go in i did not go in no i just <laughs> I was checking in. it out as we were driving I by i went in just so i could see what they had yeah, what the definitely weren't 21 were. <laughs> years old and the other thing to keep in mind is it's not just buying the the nicotine device it could be any of the accessories mm -hmm. all of that is illegal to purchase for 21 and over it can be any piece of that it doesn't have to be the specific nicotine item lighters lighters are classified it's a they're, they're, they're classified yeah. yeah so it's also educating our retailers like this is this is a violation of your of your permit is there anything um, we didn't go over that you guys wanted to touch on as far as i have a question sure. what from the perspective of my 922 committee what can i take back to the committee because we are partnering with the health department for the tobacco grant mm -hmm. what can we bring into like over the summer that you think would be beneficial to try to deter the kids to help the kids or even the parents what from your guys's perspective what do you think we could do to draw the kids in to listen to us i i think parents need to know more about it so that parents are searching for it as much as we are at school watching for it as much as we are at school you know some kid like we've had kids get busted this year walking down the hallway and accidentally dropping it out of their hands falling out of backpacks so they're in their kids things so y you hate to feel like you can't trust your kids but sometimes it's you know they've got it for the first time and they were going to try it over the weekend or and they haven't tried it yet or they're holding it for someone um but i think parents need to see what they look like um where they're hiding them how they're hiding them and and even be educated on the fact that they're getting them locally from places so so a good tomorrow night starts the denison railroad festival mm -hmm. and we are actually doing a resource and informational blitz down there where mm -hmm. we have a bunch of companies coming down we will have a booth there are you do you think if i brought down some of the vaping devices for parents to actually see yeah, yeah. and explain to them mm -hmm. look because we also have the shirt have you guys seen the shirt it's got the vape device built huh. into the shirt. Oh, yeah. I've seen the hoodies yeah, the and things. Hoodies, yeah. And then mm -hmm. there's the hat that's got the vape device mm -hmm. built into the hat. Yeah. Bring some of that down tomorrow night. Do you think that's a good place to start? I do. Yeah. And we do have plans to put some information, parent-driven information on the Aportis mm -hmm. site to, you know, funnel mm -hmm. stuff. Because you have, there's a balance you have to strike you don't want to over-educate right. the kids too. You don't want to show them things that, oh, yeah. we didn't it could know that be appealing, <laughs> but yeah. stuff that parents need I to think know. that parents helping to crack down on it at home and kids knowing that their parents know more about it might help us at school too from them bringing it to school. I think that what you just said is really important because the kids thinking that their parents don't know what's going on is an open gateway to them to do something. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our kids, um, if they knew that their parents were going to be checking, wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. it. It's funny you say that because when Jody and I do our hidden in plain sight, I always end with, if you're not making your kids mad, you're not doing your job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll love you in the long run, but they'll right. hate you at yeah. the moment. I always say as the assistant principal, I'm the most hated. There's no doubt about it. It's okay <laughs> though. I Hopefully some of them someday will look back and see that tough love meant that we care about them and mr Watkins tells the kids all the time they're like i feel like we're you know in trouble all the time it's because we haven't given up on you if right. we quit asking you questions and we quit checking on you that means we've given up but we haven't given up so we're not and we're not going to and so it's okay it's okay that i'm you know can be the most uh, if i'm the most hated as long as i'm hopefully helping some of them in the long run to make better choices um so just something I've had to get adjusted to. <laughs> I'm sure through the years. Sure. Very good. All right. Well, if anyone wants any more information on vaping devices, how to get help with vaping, you can always um, check out the ADC Facebook page. You can check out the ADC website at www.adc.org or tuskadc.org. Sorry. Or you can um, check out the health department's website. And you can, um, for youth, um, you can go to My Life, My Quit uh, for cessation, confidential cessation information. And thank you again for uh, 
again, letting us go in and do the catch my breath trainings and being so proactive and such wonderful examples for yeah. the students in your district. We appreciate it. And we look forward to having you guys Ready back to work next, with year. You next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tuscarawas County Anti-Drug Coalition podcast. Please follow us on Facebook and visit our website at adctusk.org.